When it comes to engine building, installing the piston and rod assemblies is a huge step towards completing the bottom end of your engine. As with anything else, having the right tools and knowing a few tips and tricks can make the job a whole lot easier. Hey folks, Brian from Summit Racing here, and in this installment of Summit Racing Engine Building 101, we're going to take you through the process of installing your completed piston, piston ring, and connecting rod assemblies into your engine. Let's get to work. All right, at this point, uh, crank is laid. It's been really nice. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and drop in some pistons and rods, etc. cetera. Uh, before we do that, we want to make sure that the bores, they've already been cleaned. We're just going to go ahead and hit the bores with some ATF here. Got out the gloves, summit racing, by the way, very high quality. And we're going through and we're just going to go ahead and sop down the inside of the bores, make sure everything has a film of oil on it. And there's some different things you can use other than type F ATF as well. You know, there's quick seat, et cetera, you know, for some people that are trying to get their rings to seat in quick, but for what we're doing with it, this is gonna be perfect. Okay, we're getting ready to put a, our first piston and rod in. Uh, we've got our Summit uh, tapered ring compressor tool. Um, one thing I've done, and I've done it in the connecting rod as well, is I've put our bearing guard in there and put a nice thin coat of, of assembly lube on the cap and the upper shell. We're gonna go ahead and uh, lubricate the skirts with a little motor oil, or you can use ATF. And then we're gonna put some in the rings as well. Now you'll notice I'm not actually wearing gloves, and, and why is that? Uh, one thing I wanna do before, anytime before this piston is getting ready to go into a piston, is I wanna make sure that that oil ring has remained where it should be uh, it's still floating around in the groove nice, telling me that the expander hasn't popped. I uh, want to double check and make sure that my grooves uh, or my gaps are on the opposite sides here. So basically toward me on the top and away from me on the second. And then at this point, valve reliefs on any two valve engine are going to go toward the top of the engine. I have verified uh, that our connecting right here has the bevel facing what is going to be the chamfer in the crank. I'm going to just drop it in there, load the rings, now she's getting a good start. Okay, now, skirt's lined up. Now while he does that, I'm going to go ahead and guide it in from the top here. If you haven't seen our Summit hammers, they are awesome. Made in USA, really nice pieces. You just drive that baby. So, guide it in. Solid, there it is, Mike. solid nice down work. there. Very good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab our cap here. Again, gonna make sure that this chamfer is toward the fillet of the crank and I'm gonna come in from underneath Again, verifying chamfer out to match the, the fillet in the crank there. Go ahead and get this guy up in place. Get it started with a few threads. Go ahead and press the cap pretty close to home there. Around the west, rest of the way in with my fingers. This is one of the things, you're, you're around the rod journal uh, on the crank. You want to take your time with this thing. You don't want to scratch anything up. Uh, it's just better to take your time here. All right, now that I have those drawn in, I'm going to go ahead and make them a little more snug. When these are all said and done, you can't even see the parting line except for a little bit of grease right there kind of poking out. It's a really good connecting rod. All right, we have a little bit of side to side movement. That is perfect in there. And now we're going to come in and basically go down and do two, four, six, eight. Roll the block back over and do the whole thing all, all over again. All right, now at this point, 
Everything's in there. Verified we actually have you know, a fair amount of side clearance, but we're gonna double check it after we have all the rods torqued down. Uh, torquing the rods, you, you've been through this with us a little bit before. How we prefer you do it is to go ahead and take it to 30 foot pounds, all the way down the line, one to the next, and then to do a 50 degree sweep on each one. So it's torque angle, not torque yield, torque angle. The reason we do that is to get better repeatability, which we're gonna show you. Uh, the other thing we wanna show you is our ARP rod bolt stretch gauge. This is a fine piece of equipment. Uh, different bolts, uh, whether it be a 8740 or ARP 2000, L19, uh, custom made 625, et cetera, they all have a different tensile strength and they all have a different length. Uh, and all of those with the rod manufacturers, they'll call out a, a, a length that they want you to hit. Uh, in our case, we're looking for anywhere from five thousandths and one tenth to five thousandths and five tenths for our 1.400 underhead bolt length. And Ready? with that? Okay, we're gonna pull these babies to 30 and then work our way down and then we'll go ahead and um, Torque them to 50 after that. Okay, while he's rotating that over, I'm going to go ahead and set the gauge up Should for 50 degrees of angle. We got to make sure that that thing is reset for 50 degrees. She is. Give myself a nice now swing here. 20, 30, 40, 50.3, 87 foot pounds of torque. I'm going to go in and zero it again. Come back and hit my other bolt. Look at that. What's her number, Mike? I'm about like five seven, five eight, somewhere in I'll over. I'll take it. Just under six thousandths. So that worked. Uh, that worked perfect. We hope you've enjoyed our video on piston and rod installation. We hope that you found a few little tricks in there that will be helpful when you build your next short block. So as always, be sure to like and subscribe to get more of our how-to, technical, and installation videos. Thanks for watching.